After Inoatar had disappeared into the woods, Uriella had felt a mixture of loss and of relief. Inoatar had been so much more than a pet. After twelve standard years of solitude in her small Waldera base science station, this ant monkey had become an unlikely but true friend. His disappearance into the woods after Uriella had explained to him the full impact of the Lilith incident proved to her how deep their friendship was. After the reports about the incident reached the small southeast Waldera science station, Uriella's relationship with Inoatar had instantly become a cause for serious concern. Concern for her own survival and most of all concern for her family and clan. Ant monkeys were bioengineered using and combining the genetic material of Waldarian ants and Marzolian apes. Ant monkeys had been bred on Skiun by the Bio Guild for the cheap labor they could provide. It all seemed like such a perfect match. The Marzolian apes, in stature almost a Russian childlike, were relatively intelligent and had sufficient intellectual and physical potential for performing non trivial tasks. They lacked, though, any concept of hierarchy and any structural cooperative interaction beyond their base matriarchal family pack hunting cooperation patterns. Adult apes, however, violently rejected any type of authority. Waldarian ants, on the other hand, although lacking any level of intelligence, were amazingly organized to such an extent that a Waldarian ant nest, with its tens of thousands of worker ants, was not that much different in structure from the ancient patriarchally organized city-states on Cyrus Prime. Waldarian ants were like the cells in an Russian's body. Every ant knew only how to play its part, but the whole nest functioned almost like a single semi-intelligent organism. When the Bayou Guild started selling ant monkey workers to the cities on UM, but more importantly to the Mining Guild, a golden age seemed to have arrived in the Oru system. Inoatar was an ant monkey male, not a worker, so just like all ant monkey males, Inoatar's economic value for the guild ended after mating with a queen, usually at an age of somewhat more than one standard year. Males were given away by the guild as pets to highly regarded masters of other guilds, and as in Uriella's case, to relatives of council members if these were sent on solitary missions. Uriella, by virtue of having an uncle on the guild's top council, had received Inoatar as a pet to keep her company on Waldera. While the forest planet Waldera had rich and abundant fauna, the animals on Waldera were all but appealing to average Russians. So having a companion with more agreeable features than the Waldarian insects, spiders, slugs, snakes and lizards was a prospect that would likely be welcomed by any guild member sent for a standard solitary 15-year mission to a place such as Waldera. Uriella was privileged in this regard. Males were rare, a male just like a queen that would produce about a thousand eggs each day for five consecutive standard years mated only once. Ant monkey mating was quite a spectacle. It involved a single queen and a handful of males. The spectacle would take a few hours and for the male ant monkey it was not without peril. Inotar had required quite a bit of medical care in the first few weeks that he was in Uriella's possession. Mating injuries could be bad. They were never fatal, but lasting injuries had been reported. But now things had changed drastically. The golden age for the Oru system, and the privileged position the guild had enjoyed as sole supplier of ant monkey workers had come to an abrupt end. The Lilith incident changed everything. The Skiun ant monkey breeding colonies had all been placed in quarantine after the Lilith colony ant monkey uprising. The guild's bioengineers had taken all the usual precautions for their ant monkey genetic meta architecture. The mythical guildmaster, Ursang III, the first bio to ever secure a place in the Senate, had been the intellectual father of what had become the power base for the bio guild. Regressive evolution life inhibitor technology, Reli Tech for short, allowed the guild to work around the four laws of equilibrium that would normally have well-designed life forms within just four or five generations devolve into a species with dangerously different properties than those initially designed. Ursang III had created the concept of a Reli gene, a gene that effectively stopped new equilibrium from occurring by crudely stopping evolution itself. Potentially dangerous animals like the ant monkey were genetically imprinted to not harm their Russian masters in any way, and to protect them if they perceived any danger. For ant monkey workers, the natural reverence of Waldarian ants towards their queen had been used as a basis for their Russian imprints. The designs were created with multiple major vital functions tied to their reli gene. So with their imprinted reli gene ensuring unquestioning reverence of all their Russian masters, and with multiple vital functions bound to this reli gene ensuring an early death for larvae with a reli gene that was in any way mutated, the Skiun incident where ant monkeys slaughtered more than 2,000 guild members defied all logic. Before the incident, Uriella's use of a geno virus on Inoatar would at worst have gotten her assigned to a level 4 post in South Um City Central as next post, rather than the assistant post in the North Um City of Gar that her uncle had worked so hard to secure for her. Inoatar was after all just a single and now infertile male on a planet without queens or settlements, and relatives of council members always received the benefit of the doubt in such cases. But after the Skiun incident the guild council was no doubt frantically looking for a way out of the current quarantine. 
a level 3 bioengineer that was caught messing with a breeder's rally gene would make Uriella a more than perfect scapegoat. Seven standard years ago, by that time already having grown extremely fond of Inoatar, Uriella had taken a rather bold action that could very well get her into deep trouble if it were now discovered. Uriella had been around ant monkeys before during her time on Skiun, but never had she developed any emotional ties to them. When her feelings of friendship towards Inoatar had unexpectedly deepened, Inoatar, like any ant monkey, could only answer Uriella's show of friendship with the unquestioning loyalty and reverence that came from the guild's patented Reli gene technology. Ant monkeys, in order to be able to follow non-trivial work orders, were bioengineered to gain a reasonable understanding of the Russian language, although most ant monkeys only possessed conversational skills not much better than that of a toddler. Inoatar, in contrast, had shown amazing conversational skills approximating those of an Russian adolescent. Next to his language skills, Inoatar had also shown an understanding of engineering that could probably have rivaled that of some of Uriella's less gifted classmates back in pre-guild, who even though they didn't make it to an apprentice position included some of Uriella's best friends outside the guild. Inoatar was mentally gifted way beyond the basic level of his bioengineered heritage. It was this that made it difficult for Uriella to accept Inoatar's bioengineered reverence of her. Inoatar wasn't just a pet, he was a person like her. Not a Russian no, but still a person. A person though as his really gene ensured without a trace of free will. Uriella struggled with the moral implications of this realization for quite some time. Could she allow a person to live a sub-Russian existence while being held hostage by his really gene in a reality of pseudo-religious slavery? On the other hand, she could not just blatantly ignore the stringent guidelines regarding really safety of bioengineered animals. Inoatar was now sterile, but the four laws of equilibrium left no doubt about the guild's deeply rooted fear of the dangers of a new natural equilibrium. Her training and logic went directly against her deep feelings of friendship for this extraordinary creature that was more like a son to her than a pet. In the end emotion overcame logic and duty, and Uriella engineered a simple yet effective targeted genovirus. The virus didn't change the Reli gene in any way, but simply changed the second gene in such a way that the blind reverence induced by the Reli gene was effectively removed. Uriella was delighted to find that Inoatar, with his new free will gene activated, accepted her friendship and after a few years he turned into an almost a Russian companion. But now, after the reports of the Lilith incident had reached her, delight had turned into despair. If the free will gene was discovered, Uriella would probably face the most severe punishment known to the guild. Not only would Uriella herself face the most lengthy and gruesome death conceivable, her entire clan, even her uncle on the council, would be expelled from the guild and reduced to the lowest social standing in a Russian society. They would be reduced to non-citizens, damned dwellers most probably, a fate Uriella did not wish upon anyone. So now that Inoatar had disappeared into the endless Waldera woods, while she felt the loss of never seeing her dear friend again, Uriella felt relieved. She knew he was skilled enough to survive the Waldera forest, and its vastness combined with its often hostile wildlife made it very unlikely that his free will gene would ever be discovered by the guild. 